Hello and welcome to today's class. Um, I've solved several challenges of this kind and I'll be able to use two to three different methods in solving challenges of this kind. But here I'm going to use the common method we all know. Yeah, if you want to get a clue or a hint into the two other methods I use in solving challenges of this kind, then I'm going to leave a link in the description below where you're going to have some of those challenges where I use a special approach that is different from the normal one that you know. And so the question is solve for x and y. The first equation is x plus y equal to 3. We're taking this as equation 1. And the second one is x times y is equal to our, this is second equation. So how do we solve for x and y in this challenge? We take our solution first. Okay, now I'm going to take my bearing from equation two. So from equation two, I want to make y the subject of the formula. So making y the subject of the formula from here, this is going to give us our y is equal to our one all over x, okay? So let's call this equation three. So we want to put equation three into equation one. So putting equation three to equation one, let's put down our equation one. We have our x plus our y is equal to three. So wherever we see y, we want to put in one all over x. So this is going to give us x plus our one all over x equal to r three. And so we can eliminate this denominator. We multiply through by our x so this is going to give us x times x then plus one all over x times x equal to three times x yeah we're going to have here x to the power of two the plus okay yeah yeah we give us one so we have here plus one equal to uh three x all we just need to do here is to rearrange the equation in other words Take all the terms on the right hand side to the left hand side. And so this is going to give us our x to the power of 2, then minus 3x plus 1 equal to 0. This is a quadratic equation. So, how do we solve this quadratic equation? If you check carefully, you discover that in this challenge here, we cannot use factorization method. And so, we want to use the formula method in solving for the value of our x here. So using formula method, okay, formula method, what does the formula say? The formula says that your x is equal to the minus of b plus minus the square root of b to the power of 2 minus 4ac all over 2a. We just have to bring out the value of a, b, and c in the system. So the value of a here is equal to 1, which is the coefficient of x to the power of 2, and the value of b is the coefficient of just x, which is minus 3, and the value of c is the constant term, and it is positive 1. Let's put these values into the equation. So this is going to give us our x equal to our minus bracket minus 3 plus bracket plus minus the square root of our minus 3 to the 2, then minus 4 times, yeah, I'm using dot as a, a symbol for multiplication, which is times, so times our 1, then times our minus 1 again. Okay, say minus 1, sorry, it's positive 1, please. Okay, so all over 2 times 1. All right, so we have this, where we simplify this, going to give us Minus times minus will give us positive 3, the plus minus the square root of minus 3 to the power of 2 we give us 9, then minus 4 times 1 times 1 we give us uh, 4. So we have here 4 all over 2. This is equal to the 3, the plus minus. If we take 4 from 9, that will give us 5. And so we're going to have the square root of 5 here all over 2. So we have x1 and x2 from this 6 term here. What are the values? So automatically we're going to have our x1 is equal to our positive 3 plus our square root of 5 all over 2. 
we can equally express this as our 1 all over 2 bracket 3 plus the square root of 5. Close bracket. Okay. Then x2, we're going to have our x2 is equal to our 3 minus the square root of 5 all over 2. This is equal to 1 all over 2 bracket our 3 minus the square root of 5 close bracket so this is the second value of our x so we have x1 and x2 to this challenge and when you have a challenge of this kind after solving for the first and second root of x don't bother to solve for the value of y you can get the value of y just from the conjugate of the first one in other words if you look at this expression here the conjugate to this is your x2. And so your y1 is going to be the conjugate of x1 and y2 is the conjugate of our x2. In other words, our y1 is going to give us 1 all over 2 bracket open 3 minus the square root of 5. And our y2 is going to give us 1 all over 2 bracket open 3 then plus the square root of 5. But if you doubt it, let's go ahead and solve for the values of y1 and y2. And getting the value of y1 and y2 is very easy. If you look to equation 3, you discover that we've made y the subject of the formula already. So let's just go ahead and substitute the value of our x1 and x2 into the equation. So from our equation, we're going to have this to be our y1 will now be equal to 1 all over x1. So let's substitute to see what this gives us. So we have 1 all over, what is our x1? Look at our x1 here. And so rewriting this, this is going to give us our 3 the plus the square root of 5 all over 2. So if you check carefully, this is more or less the reciprocal of everything we have here. And so if we simplify this, this is going to give us 2 all over 3 the plus the square root of 5. Now, can we leave our answer in this format? No. We just apply the rule of sword, which says that when you have expression of this kind, what you do is to rationalize the denominator. And how do we rationalize the denominator? You check the denominator here. We're having 3 plus root 5. And so we multiply both the numerator and the denominator of this expression by the conjugate of this expression. And when we say conjugate of an expression, it simply means, for instance, if you have your root a, okay, then plus root b, the conjugate of this is your root a minus root b. That is how simple it is. And so we rationalize this denominator. So this is going to give us our y1 is equal to 2 into our 3 minus square root of 5 all over our 3 plus the square root of 5 bracket plus times 3 minus the square root of r5. Easy. Okay, now the numerator here is easy. So let's just stay, keep it intact. So we have here 2 bracket our 3 minus the square root of 5 close bracket. Now remember that when you multiply any expression by its own conjugate, what happened? The radicals will leave in this case here now. And so we're going to have our 3 to the power of 2 minus the square root of 5 to the power of 2. Remember? Yeah. And so this denominator is going to give us here our 3 to the power of 2 minus the square root of 5 or raised to the power of 2. This is simple logic here. All right. So with this, we're going to have our square here. We go with the square root here. And so we're going to have our y1 is equal to 2 into our 3 minus the square root of 5, close bracket, then all over our 9, then minus r5. This is equal to, remember that what we have here is simple. So we have 2 into 3 minus the square root of 5, close bracket, all over. If we take away 5 from 9, then We'll be left with our 4. Give 4, 2 can divide 4 here to give us 2, 2 here will give us 1. And so we're left with our y1 
is equal to our bracket open 3 minus the square root of 5 close bracket all over 2. Easy, right? Good. Now we can rewrite this expression to give us therefore our y1 is equal to 1 all over 2 into, into 3 minus the square root of 5. Easy. Now let's take a look at our x1. Check out our x1. Look at our x1. So we have our x1 to be 1 all over 2 bracket 3 plus root 5. And look at our y1. Our y1 is 1 all over 2 bracket 3 minus root 5. So this is a conjugate to this. So it implies that our y2, like I said earlier on, will still give us same thing. In other words, we're going to have our y2 is equal to, if we go ahead to substitute first, then this is going to give us 1 all over our x2 is your 1 all over 2 bracket 3 minus the square root of 5 close bracket. And so when you simplify this expression, you're going to come up with the conjugate of our x2. And so without much waste of time, we're going to have our y2 is equal to our 1 all over 2 bracket our 3 plus the square root of 5. This is our y2 and this is our y1. So in all, we can bring out the values of our x and y that satisfy this beautiful equation. And so we have our x comma y gonna be equal to bracket open. Our x1 is this. So we're gonna have our one all over two, the bracket. So let's use the square bracket here. Bracket are three, the plus the square root of five, close bracket, comma. Then our y1, we have 1 all over 2, close bracket, our 3 minus the square root of 5, close bracket, square bracket, close, comma. Then the second one, we have our 1 all over 2, bracket, our x2, we got our x2 here, so we have our 3 minus the square root of 5, close bracket, bracket, 1 all over 2, uh, close bracket, our 3 plus the square root of 5, close bracket, square root, close. So these are the beautiful roots to these simultaneous equation, this beautiful simultaneous equation. Okay, so this brings us to the end of this math class. If you learned something from this beautiful math challenge, then give the video a thumbs up. And if you're not clear in any of these steps, then drop a comment in the comment section. Online Mass TV is there to meet with you and we will answer all your questions. Thank you for being there all the time. See you in our next class. But till we meet with you again, keep winning. And remember, Jake's Dolls loves you. And every one of us at Online Mass TV loves you dearly. Bye for now.